you would be when I go about the holy books and like um, I wouldn't really I'd call myself a thinker or, or, or what they call the true definition of an anarchist not not these idiots who go around blowing stuff up but someone who will go to anyone in any religion and say tell me what you got here and then I'll take the bits that make sense to me and the bits that don't make sense to me I'll leave alone basically like that's that's what I would do but I was just wondering you guys were kind of debating what some of the people were meant to have said in the Bible, etc, etc. And I was just thinking in my head, I was just like, what, what, what about like, um, like the Council of Nicaea and, and Charlemagne and all of that stuff? And, and like, you know, like these guys arguing about angels dancing on the head of a pin and all this stiffness and, and all of the great, I mean, like, what, what would, what would be the point debating it? I mean, uh, uh, the idea of a creator is possible. Yeah. Uh, I don't give myself a bracket of any kind. Well, like, I mean, you hold an agnostic position. Well, Plato said wisdom is knowing how little you know, so I would say that I keep an open mind to a certain degree, but not too open so bullshit gets in. Okay, but how do you define that? Define what? Yes. yes. Um, I think that truth, Every. I think we already know it, because when something's true to you, it never seems foreign to you. Obviously, you can be tricked with like little psychological games, but like something that is true is kind of like, you know, like as in, well, the sun has nothing to do with global warming. I mean, they try and say it, but it's like, well, I mean, if the, if the earth is going to warm up, the sun would have something to do with it, innit? Like that kind of makes logical sense to me. What's your, okay, what I'm told. How, what's your way of verifying truth? Um, I mean, <laughs> a personal bullshit detector? No, not really. I mean, that's a joke. I mean, I don't know. You, there is no way of verifying truth. You base it on your experiences, your actions, what you've seen, people that you can, you've talked to, and stuff like that. That's all. Okay. So witness testimony. Sorry, again? Witness testimony. Witness testimony. Well, no. I said personal experience. Personal experience. Yeah, but witness testimony. You have to look at the person's reasons. Like any book that I read, I always look at the author. Who was he? What was his life? What did he do? Why? Why was he writing that stuff? Right, so the question is like, what I would say to you is that generally, depending upon how you define your truth standard, yeah. Yeah. Because look, some people have a mathematic truth standard. Yeah. Some people have a scientific truth standard. Mm -hmm. Some people have a historical truth standard. Something is historically, whatever it is, it can be proven historically to be true. I accept it. Yeah. That's how you should. Okay. So if you're, what is your truth? First of all, what is your truth standard? True standard of what, basically? How do you know what truth is? Uh, I, I think that, that it is possible for people to have different perspectives of truth, basically, okay. because certain people are going to say, okay, well, mankind's destiny is to is go to the stars. Is objective something, truth other than. something that is achievable? Objective truth. Yeah, there is objective truth, I would say. No, I would say there was objective right and wrong, not truth. Okay, how would you define it? If someone who's no religion, how would you get it? Yeah, that's a good question. Would you mean say again? How would you, okay, how would you get objective uh, morality yeah. from someone with no religion? Um, well, it's difficult because obviously, if you believe in, um, if you take the idea of evolution to the furthest degree, then you're going to believe that everybody, you know, there is no point. It's all just a cosmic joke. So if I just basically start punching everyone now and you will beat me. Yeah. How can you objectively show me that raping a one-year-old baby, okay. your worldview is wrong? I believe that all human beings are born with an objective moral centre well, within belief, them. Where is it based on? Uh, my belief is based on the fact that all of this stuff to do with um, so-called sexual liberalism and the fact that children can be included in that was purported by Kinsey. This was the uh, the Kinsey Institute and, and okay. all of on all of I'm just all of, all of this can, stuff. What you believe? How can you prove it? How can I prove it? Well, I mean, there's, I mean. There are good documentaries of testimony of people who are actually there. Now, obviously, you can take the idea that anything can be fake, and yeah, it could all be I bogus. I, I don't, but I, don't I mean, get what you're saying. I'm just asking you a simple question, right? Saying that you're saying you're saying here because you've used some words. You said the BS, yeah. Yeah. You use it. Okay, I find out what's true and I take it. I'm just saying, how do you find out if anything is true? Your worldview. How do you come to the conclusion? Yeah, this is true. This is false. I, I I've come to the conclusion that you probably can't. Okay, I like that. Now honestly it's coming from that's, you. That's What's your name? Patrick. Patrick Mahmoud. Well, now we can be formally introduced. Yes. So I'm happy that you come to that yeah. conclusion. Yeah, you, you know can. why? Because now we can help each other. We can. Okay. We can help each other. Fine. The reason why we're going to help each other 
is because now we want to make sense of the world, right? We want a system whereby we can actually make sense of the world, morality can start making sense to you, existence can start making sense to you, truth can start making sense to you. I'm going to tell you how you can do this. Okay, I'll tell you something. Everything has limitations. Mathematics has limitations. Did you know that? You know mathematics has limitations. You might say, okay, it doesn't have limitations. I'll tell you, yeah, it does have limitations. You know, research this guy called Kurt Godel, yeah? Very interesting philosopher, yeah? His name is Kurt Godel, G-O-D-E-L, yeah? He made two theorems, one called Incom Incompleteness Theorem 1, and the other one is called Incompleteness Theorem 2. What he tried to do is show that parts of mathematics are inconsistent. And up until this day in the philosophy of maths, people are struggling to find out answers for this. That's one example. In science, we know that science is changing. How do we know that? Read Thomas Kuhn, The, Sci the Structures of Scientific Revolution. Science changes, therefore, it can't be completely true at all times. And as well, it's funded by the big powers. They fund science, like they, 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 they fund the grants, good, scientists run on grants, they've got families see, to feed. You know what? You're I'm not telling say, you what they want. What you say it might sound like a conspiracy theory it's to not. the people. But it's not. it's not. Let me tell you why it's not a conspiracy theory. Let me tell you why it's not a conspiracy theory. The reason, why, the reason why it's not a conspiracy theory is there's an oversight body called cytometrics. Cytometrics is actually a way in which it tries to show how much oversight is being done to science. So in other words, when one scientist comes out of his published materials, they say, okay, this other scientist is he going to find out if this person has done it wrong or not. And that oversight has gone down. Even The Economist had an article on this recently. It said that oversight in science has gone down. In like the 2000s, it was about 15%, where in the 90s, it was about 30%. Anyways, the point I'm making to you is, if you're looking for something that's absolutely, completely true, everything can be criticized, yeah? Science, maths, everything. Now I'm going to say to you, look, so how do we actually function? I'm going to tell you how we function, me and you, yeah? Me and you function on a probabilistic type reasoning. That's how we function. So like for example, I say I'm probably, I'm probably here. He's probably real. Did you get it? I, I, this is probably, these are probably sunglasses and so on and so forth. If I call someone, yeah, I probably know that it's actually that person on the other side of the phone. Even though literally it could be someone else so faking their voice. Scientific pessimism. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that we work on probability reasoning. Yeah? Yeah. So if we use that same reasoning, yes. Yes. let me just introduce you to one argument. You believe in a higher power, you say it's a higher power. Right? So I'm saying let's use that same argument now. Let's go through this. We as Muslims. We believe that prophets were sent before time, prophets and messengers. All of them with the same particular message, to believe in one God and to worship one God. That they were sent with two things, a message and a miracle. A message and evidences, you could say, yeah? The message was to believe in a one God and to worship one God. Yeah. The, the evidence is... Yeah, but weren't the Egyptians doing that with Alman Ra and, and, and Aton back in back in their time? And he was the guy who took um, the, the, the polytheism that they had of all of the gods with the heads. And then he was like, no, 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 no. I'm, uh, that's why the Christians even say Amen at the end of their prayers now. They even know why. Because Amen Ra, he was the sun. He was the guy in the sky. He was uh, Isis Horus Horus. He, he was the guy who was basically the real founder of monotheism. Oh, what, 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 what we believe in, yeah? yeah. Uh, we can substantiate this with not only scriptural evidence, but historical evidence, yeah? We can say that even to the Egyptians, there were prophets that were sent. So for example, obviously in the biblical narrative, and the Quranic narrative, we believe Moses. Now if you look at, at the time of Murempatar, the stella of Murempatar, the stella is like a big rock that the Egyptians write on there. On the 27th flight, it says that Beni Israel were there. Now who are Beni Israel? Almost all Egyptologists agree that Beni Israel here are the children of Israel. Yeah? So the children of Israel is a reference to the people that Murempatar says we excluded from the land and all this kind of thing. Now, this coincides with the time of Ramses II because Rampatar was at the same time as Francis II. From this we can say that even our claim that the prophets have come a full time with the message that there's only one God worthy of worship is substantiated not only archaeologically but with primary source materials from the Egyptians. Now you mentioned yeah, the Egyptians, then, that's why I've mentioned but then, but then you could, But then you, I could find a bunch of black dudes over there, a bunch of Chinese people over there, but plus as well, why does it... The thing is, why do we focus on one area of the planet at one specific time and then say anything that happened there 
gives the historical right for everything. What about the, the, the other random people with aboriginals in the jungles exactly. doing what they were doing? Exactly. What, 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 why is not what they believe relevant as well? Why don't we follow that shit now? I'm saying it's all irrelevant. And you've got 70 years and you might as well just keep it moving. Let me ask you something. Let me say something, yeah? That look, we agree with that point. That point that you said that why is it that we should talk about one relevant or uh, one part of the world? I'm, I'm thinking that you're saying the Middle East, yeah? Yeah, why do we focus on there and say it's all about there? Like, what about the blacks? What about exactly, exactly, exactly. The, the Russians? What By the way, let me, say, let me tell you your two things, yeah? Number one, we have a tradition of the Prophet, which some people say is authentic, which says that basically there was 124,000 Prophets. Now, each of these prophets were sent to their people in their time. Now, obviously, human existence is a long time. In order to cover geography and time, you need more prophets. All these prophets were sent to specific people at specific times. As to your direct thing about black people, we have authentic narrations that say, for example, Moses was black. That the Prophet Muhammad is sending a hadith that basically he I don't give a flying fuck if he was green or blue. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That makes a lot of. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You made the claim that why is it the case that the message has only been delivered to a certain kind of people in a certain place? Yeah? You know, what I'm saying to you is that some of our mightiest messengers, like Moses, and some say even Jesus, yeah, that he was darker than, than the, obviously the depictions the Christians have, that these individuals were sent first of all to Africa, so because Egypt's in Africa, yeah, and at that time in Africa, I'm Egyptian, but obviously people didn't look like me. They look more like you, my friend. Yeah? So when Moses came to his people, he came to people that look like you, not people that look like me. Even though what you might associate with like Moses and the story of Moses is people that look like me. You're saying what happened to the black people. I'm saying the black people were part of our narrative. Okay, okay. Yeah. So what I'm saying is the reason I know, I'm just to wrap up. I understand the reason they do this is because we we spoke about this last night with my friends. Everybody needs a narrative. We all need stories. Yeah, but so do people to, like yourself. Of course, of course we do. But we tell ourselves, we all tell ourselves stories to basically get through. But I think that when we let these stories obscure to the point where basically, like, you know, Patrick, Patrick, like, Patrick, you Patrick, argue Patrick, about Patrick, them, Patrick, I think. Patrick, you got, right. you got let me You've got to realize something that we're living in this world, yeah? yeah. This world, everyone's got a bias. You've got a hedonistic bias, you don't realize it. You're a, you're a hedonist of some sort. You're, you might even be a utilitarian without knowing it. You might believe in that. You know what you might believe? Yeah, yeah I might be anything. You might be anything, anything. But you don't even know what you're like. The most ignorant, I'm not saying you, I'm not saying yeah, 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 yeah. But the most ignorant people are those who don't know A, that they have a bias, yeah. and B, that they don't know what bias they have, anyways. <laughs> okay, do you know what I'm saying? But we have to realize something that we're all biased, we're, all, we're, we're biased. It's not about having a bias, it's about which bias is true. Yeah. Alright, so what I'm saying to you is that our narrative, we have evidences that substantiate its truth value. Do you get it? So it's not like we're just coming to you today and saying, look, believe, and these are nice stories here. No, I'm coming to you today, Patrick, saying, look, we have a narrative, yes, we have a bias, yes, we admit it, because that would be un disingenuous if we didn't admit it. But what I'm saying is that with this narrative, yeah, and with this belief, we also have evidences. And if you're a man of probability reasoning, as we talked about in the beginning, then you'd accept that, okay, at least we have a case. Okay. It? okay, so just to wrap it up, I would say that I agree with that, right. but I agree with you all the way up until my probability reasoning doesn't take that particular narrative, although I respect wait it. Up, wait up, and said, and I'm, and I'm, what you said there doesn't make sense. You know why? Because probability is a branch of mathematics. You can't say my probability. It doesn't make any no, sense. No, no, no. Well, I, I just mean, okay, okay. I would say the way my bias reasons. No, no, no forget that. The way my no, personal no, no, bias no, reasons. The thing is, yeah, look. I'm not saying mathematics is perfect, but probability is a branch of it, yeah? Now, probability is something which can be reasoned on a logical level, yeah? If I say to you, look, What's the pro what is the probability of flicking, flipping two coins? Yeah, even logic itself can be argued. The big boys do it all the time. Every kid, I, I, they they, they come into a new law and say, hey, look, this is logical, but, and that wasn't logical, you, so, and you have to believe it. So I'm asking you a question. Do you, say, do you take rationality as a premise? Yes or no?
Because you're because now you're going deeper. You're saying that anything can be argued. I'm saying the same thing. But I'm saying, do you accept that we're rational, sentient, cognizant creatures that have the ability to rationalize with one another and come to logical? Yeah, I do. Believe okay, that. so that's what we're talking about. The basis of. Okay, 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 okay. But at the same time, people who have the same. Are, are you basically trying to say that if you are a rational person, you're a Muslim? Bottom line, is that what we're saying? No, no, just, no, 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 no. Okay, I'm Cause, saying that because if you're not saying that, then no, we're in agreement. No, That's no, all. No, no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> How you define a person is different to. Because you can have a rational person, like a doctor, yeah? Coming out of his surgery, he's been, yeah, you know, cutting people up in surgery and all these things and telling people, giving advice, comes out smoking smokes a cigarette. Yeah. Okay, he's a logical, rational person, but is he doing a logical, rational thing? Well, we're, we're, we're naturally so irrational creatures, obviously. No, listen, 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 listen. <laughs> That's why I'm here on a Sunday. The point I'm making to you is that... <laughs> all my friends want to go and eat lunch and I'm still standing here. Because I'm an irrational creature. <laughs> what I'm saying to you is, just because someone could be rational in all of the, the majority of their worldly transactions, it could be that some of their worldly transactions, they act absolutely irrationally. My, my contention is this, that Islam as a religion, and I can, if you ask me to, I can prove it, yeah? But it depends on if you want me to answer your discretion or not. My contention is that from a theological, on a theological level, yeah. and on a scriptural level, yeah. that Islam is the only coherent worldview. Yeah. Do you know what? I'll tell you what, bruv. I, at, the, no, at the moment, at the moment, I spend a lot of my time just trying to survive and I'm going to try and retire early, I swear at 50, and then I'm going to sit down, I'm going to get all the books out, I'm going to go through all of them Why myself, I'm not, I'm not going to go How through anything, because, well, I'm, hopefully I will, if I don't, then case there are, and then I'll be able to be like, and if I get to that point, I'll be like, damn, that guy was right, I'll tell you what, but you until then, I can't then, prove I'm, it, okay. that I can't prove it, you can't so, prove it. You have I'm just like, cool. okay, you, you can't prove it, but you haven't asked me to for you, or to try and show you the uh, You know what the thing is? No, because, you know because, that shows me, because, that shows because, me you don't want to. No, 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 because this is a, this is a, this is a, this is a, a logical journey. This is how you do it. It's like um, Plato. He done it do with, the, um, with the with the with the dialogue. <laughs> you, it? you bring someone in the. It's, it's like um, you know, I am going to show you the way, and I'm just like, listen, we get it. You don't want Remember, to I said a true good. anarchist. I come, I listen to what I want to listen to, and then the parts that I don't want to listen to. I do, do you know what it sounds like? Well, I think it's cool. You're saying this. But I respect you're it. Saying I this. You're saying that whatever you show me, whatever you do, I'm not looking to change my life at the moment. Not at the moment. Yeah. I'm talking about uh, ever until I see reason too. Plus, as well, as you said, the doctor who smokes, we do loads of irrational things anyway. So it is what it is. That's just like, that's human nature, that's who we are. That's, and that's it. That's all saying something, I think it could be if people. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Vegar and I'm a Norwegian Muslim convert. I cannot express how grateful I am for Allah to have guided me to Islam. In my country, there are no Islamic schools or Dawah centers that fully operate in my language. A lot of the Islamic programs here are in Urdu, Arabic, and Somali, and I don't understand these languages. We new Muslims need a place where we, we really can learn Islam. Alhamdulillah, Allah guided me to the Dawah organization Islam Net, who helped me stay firm in my religion. We are now raising funds to establish a Norwegian masjid and Dawah center that will educate our people about Islam in the Norwegian language. The Prophet wasallam said, whoever builds a masjid for Allah, Allah will build for him a similar house in Jannah. If you take part in this project, you will inshallah be rewarded for all the new Muslims who learn about Islam and all of the Muslims who learn to give da'wah and every single person who accepts Islam through this center. This will inshallah be an endless ongoing charity for you. And let's not forget, Allah will inshallah build for you a palace in Jannah. As a Norwegian Muslim, Norway is my country and Dawah to these people is my responsibility and you are my family. Please donate for the sake of Allah and build for yourself a house in Jannah. And whatever you give, Allah will give you more in return. And please click on the share button so you can get the reward of everyone who follows you in donating for this masjid. May Allah reward you.
Uh-huh.